So it is our purpose in this video to see what happens after the initial auction. Can the principle of equality of resources be maintained after everybody has their resources and then they go to town with it? And now obviously if we look at it from moment to moment as history progresses, equality is going to be violated. Say for example we have two people, Claude and Adam. Claude buys a plot of land that's equally fertile as Adam does. They buy the same kind of plot of land and they buy it for the same price, which is possible in the auction because each thing is, is auctioned separately. Remember that. Then, and, and let's say that Adams has a real green thumb. You know, he, he likes coconuts and so he takes that land and he plants coconut palm trees. And as a result, he gets a huge crop of coconuts the next year, and it turns out that people like coconuts. And so the other immigrants, uh, members of the society, buy a lot of his coconuts, and he makes and he uses that to purchase more resources, and therefore he gets a lot of money. Now Claude, he buys this land with the same amount of fertility, and let's say both of them have the same amount of talent, and they, but Claude uses that land to just simply uh, make a tennis court and so that he could play tennis with his friends. And so that's what he does. And as a result, and, and let's say there are only a few people who want to play tennis, and let's say he doesn't charge any money for people to play tennis, and so after that couple of years, what's going to happen is Adam's going to have a lot more resources than Claude, and then Claude, we could say, has reason to envy Adam, doesn't he? And so we see that if we look at things like that, then it seems that what's going to happen is after production and trade, the principle of equality is going to be violated. The principle of envy is going to be violated. But that's because we don't understand the nature of the auction. You see, the real price what I'm paying is not so much just the actual number of seashells I put into the bid, but what comes, what I purchase, is I'm purchasing opportunities too. And the real price of things also have to include the, the risks that I take in what I purchase, or the kind of work that would need to be put in. In other words, think of it like this. When I purchase an apple tree, I shouldn't expect oranges. I should expect apples. I'm not only purchasing the tree, I'm purchasing all the results of the tree, the predictable results of that tree. And so the real price of that tree is not just what I pay, but also the results that I'm getting from what I pay. And so thus, if we look at the principle, he says, of that I'm not just choosing any, a particular product at a particular time, or resource at a particular time, but I'm choosing a life and the consequences of a purchase, then you'll see that actually the principle of envy in this situation isn't violated. Because if Claude were to look at Adam and look at his whole life, and then look at his own life, we see Claude gets exactly what he paid for. He, not, he purchased the land at a certain price and he purchased leisure along with it, didn't he? He purchased what he was going to do with that land. Adam purchased land at a certain price but also decided to work that land and so part of the real price that Adam is paying is all that work that goes into raising coconuts. And so actually Adam paid more than Claude was willing to pay, wasn't he? And so if Claude were, again, ideally rational, that's the key, then he would say, look, I wasn't willing to pay the price of labor in addition to the land to get what Adam got. And so actually, I can't envy him. I don't envy him because I'm not willing to put the price in that he put to get the results that he put. So in other words, the fact that at the end of a couple years, there's a different amount of material resources doesn't mean that they have been unequally distributed because what you have to look at is the total cost of a certain kind of life we choose. 
he says this is the real principle of equality that we're working under with the principle of envy, is that each person pays the true cost of the life they choose to lead. Claude chose to lead a life of leisure, and so that was part of the price that he paid, the price of future gain from that land, whereas Adam chose to lead a life of production of that land, and he paid the real price for that too, and got as a result more out of it. But that more really wasn't more than Claude. They just allocated the, what they had in different ways, and valued and preferred different things, and therefore no one got what they didn't really choose or want. They didn't get the product that they didn't want, they, if they were rational, we should realize they were paying for what they got. But then, what about luck? Okay, this is the crucial thing here. Because luck are those things that are not in our control, right? And luck could affect equality of resources very easily, couldn't it? For example, Adam and Claude, they both buy the same kind of plot of land, same size, same potential for production. They both build farmhouses on there using the same amount of money. They both have the equal amount of talent, but unfortunately, a storm hits, a tornado hits Claude's land, destroys his farmhouse. Adam's farmhouse is fine. Adam, at the end of this all, makes out better than Claude. And so therefore, what we see is because of luck, then Claude will have good reason to envy Adam, and it won't be a result of Claude's choices. It will be a result of just something that was not under his control. Is the principle violated that way? And he says, look, we have to think about luck in two different ways. There are two types of luck. He calls them options luck versus brute luck. Okay, he's not inventing any terms here. This is all part of the insurance industry, actually, and economics. But what, what is options luck? Well, the key is the word option here. Option means choice, right? So options luck is kind of the risks or gambles that I choose or that I foresee. And therefore, when I gamble or when I choose to do something and that gamble at a choice involves a risk, then that risk is something that I deliberately choose, that chance of loss or that chance of gain. Luck could be good luck or bad luck, right? So say, for example, Adam going into this business venture of planting coconuts. He's taking the risk that his surplus won't be bought and that actually he's stuck with all these coconuts and he likes coconuts, but not that much. He was hoping to trade them for other things that he wanted. So, thus, options luck is the kind of thing where I deliberately use my resources to get to gain something, but I can gain it only at the possibility of losing something. Now that in itself doesn't violate, actually, this principle of equality the envy test, because as we saw, we pay, for the, we pay the real price for the, the life we choose to lead. Adam decides to invest his money into coconuts, knowing full well that they might not work out, that he, may not, that he might suffer a loss, then what his true price is he really values the gamble, doesn't he? He values a life that is riskier over a life that is safe. And so, therefore, if, for example, Claude doesn't take the risk, and it turns out that Claude's luck is great, but Adam's luck, options luck, is bad, so that Adam sells at a loss and even has to sell a part of his land, we can't say that the principle of equality was violated either, simply because what Adam purchased was the chance of gain, and as a result, the true price was this risk that he was taking, right? The price of a gamble is not just the money that you put in, but also the chance that you're going to lose that money or lose even more of the money, say a stock option gamble during coronavirus. And so, therefore, options luck in and of itself doesn't violate that principle of equality. Take Claude. Claude doesn't invest in coconuts. 
he takes his land, leaves it as it is, it maintains the same price, and Claude's, and, and let's say Adam is successful in his business. Well, then Adam has more at the end than Claude, but what Adam, what Claude can't complain, is that what he did is he purchased safety, didn't he? And the price of safety is the loss of the chance of gain. And so in the end, it all equalizes, because as the old saying goes, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And so thus, the principle, when we talk about options luck, the principle of equality can't be violated because what we're going to be looking at is the total cost of the comparative lives between Adam and, and Claude. And in the end, they are choosing to forgo certain things because it was too high of a price for them that they prefer not to pay. And so in principle, they have respected what has happened. This has been auctioned. Part of the price in the auction is the future gambles you're going to take. And if you don't take gambles, the future lack of opportunity for gain. That's part of the very price that you pay in the initial purchase. So again, each pays the cost of the total cost of the life, the real cost of the life they lead. The one who risks and gambles risks loss and therefore pays through that risk. And when they gain, they still paid. And the one who doesn't risk pays the price of safety, and so therefore pays the price of loss of the opportunity for gain. And so thus, at the end, that there's differences in total material goods doesn't count as real differences in distribution of goods, because it's about the total life and Claude would look at the total life of Adam, see all the cost he had to pay, he wouldn't want it. Otherwise, he would have chosen that life, and he would have had the same opportunity at the initial auction because he would have had the same amount of purchasing power. So what we need to look at next, then, is what about brute luck? What is brute luck? Brute luck is just the opposite of options luck. It's those risks and dangers that happen in life that have nothing to do with my choice. When lightning or a tornado strikes Claude's barn, he can't choose that. He doesn't foresee it. And so therefore, those kind of things in principle can violate the principle of equality because they're not things I foresee and therefore not things that I can purchase or at least not purchase. We'll deal with that in our next video.